Welcome to our next rhythm challenge. So here we have a rhythm. Again, it says name the following rhythm and choose the best answer. All right, so we have four answer choices. Sinus tachycardia, uh, B, junctional tachycardia, C, ventricular tachycardia, or D, ventricular fibrillation. Okay, so four different choices and we have two different rhythm strips we're looking at here. Okay, notice we have lead two one of our inferior limb leads in lead V1. Okay, so these are rhythm strips taken from a standard 12 lead ECG, and then here's the enlarged portions of it, okay? Again, just to help you see those little small uh, squares there, if you need any assistance with that with the finding the rate. All right, so why don't you take a moment, pause the video, and then restart it when you've come up with an answer. All right, so hopefully you've had a moment to go through it and make a choice here. Okay, so let's look at each one of these. So notice that the first three choices, uh, sinus tachycardia, junctional tachycardia, and ventricular tachycardia, all have tachycardia. So these are all fast rates, okay? And we tend to be assuming adults, so that's a rate that's greater than 100 beats per minute. Okay, so a fast rate. And then our last choice, ventricular fibrillation. So let's see how we differentiate between these first three. So sinus tachycardia, we normally want to see some P waves, okay, that are going through, and uh, you may see some here, but they're a little hard to make out, all right? Junctional tachycardia, well, remember, this is a narrow QRS complexes, okay? This is a regular rhythm, okay? So here we always have P waves in these leads, a regular rhythm as well. Same thing with here, all right? We know that the rates are all over 100, so we can add that to part of the criteria for each, okay? And then how about the ventricular tachycardia? This is wide QRS, okay? This is a regular rhythm. Again, a rate over 100 beats per minute, all right? So that should uh, make sense, and then uh, how about ventricular fibrillation? So again, this is, just as the name implies, the ventricles are pretty much fibrillating, okay? So that tends to be unorganized ventricular activity. That is not a regular rhythm, so not regular. In other words, irregular, so I'll write irregular, okay? And there's no true rate because you just have these lines that are going across. So as you can see here, if we look at the rhythm strip, take a look at V1. You notice if we take those tall peaks of the waves, okay, this R wave to this R wave, that's our R to R interval, okay? So these are positive complexes. Here's the next R to R interval. Okay, if you were to measure all of these out, so this one to this one and this one, you'd all see that all these intervals are the same, meaning this is a regular rhythm, okay? And this is certainly not ventricular fibrillation, all right? So D is not correct. So it's a regular rhythm, so all of these are regular rhythms, but what's going to decipher it from the others? Well, notice that our QRS complexes here are wide, okay? You have a wide, fast rhythm, right? There are, it's hard to make out any P waves, okay? But sometimes you can see some P waves buried within these complexes because this is a rhythm of ventricular tachycardia, okay? So this is VTAC, you may hear it as, a wide, regular, fast rhythm, okay? And this is uh, something that you really wanna be on the lookout for because it can be life-threatening, okay? It's not junctional tachycardia because it's not a narrow complex, okay? Although it's regular and fast. So how do we know it's fast? Remember, we can find the rate, find one of those QRS complexes that falls on, near one of those thick lines, okay? So if you take, let's say this one here, close enough, and find the next one here, Okay, it's almost about two. So the rate is certainly, if you do 300 over two, that gives you 150, okay? But it's a little less than two, so it's probably greater than 150, right around that, okay? So a fast rate, you can also count the complexes going across, all right, and multiply that by six. That's another way you can do that here. Um, so the rate is, we can obviously tell it's a fast rate, but it's not junctional because the complexes are not narrow. It's not, and it's uh, albeit a regular and fast rhythm. So junctional rhythm is not correct. And this is clearly not a sinus rhythm, okay? You often in sinus rhythm will see upright P waves in lead two, okay? And this will be followed by QRS complexes, but you don't have 
clearly P way is preceding every QRS complex here. Okay, I mean you could have a sinus tachycardia and an AV block, all right, but that's not going on here. So um, we don't see a true sinus tachycardia or sinus rhythm here, all right. Um, you don't see upright P waves in lead two, where the axis is kind of heading to that positive 60 degrees. Remember, the P wave axis lies between zero and positive 75 degrees. We don't see any biphasic uh, P waves in V1. Okay, so based on this, the best choice is still ventricular tachycardia. Now, VTAC is a sometimes a very difficult rhythm, even for the most experienced cardiologist, to differentiate from a supraventricular rhythm with aberrancy. Okay, so those are very difficult to really differentiate. Um, and one thing to know: there's a lot of criteria that's prompo been proposed you know, of how to differentiate between these wide complex uh, arrhythmias, the, the, these wide complex tachyarrhythmias, okay? They're all fast, wide, regular rhythms. How do we tell if they're originating from above the ventricles or are they coming from the ventricles, which is more life-threatening, okay, versus an SVT? So um, despite all these algorithms, I just want to tell you that they're not very good, okay? And what we're doing here at Mayo Clinic is uh, using a lot of artificial intelligence now, and we're finding that it's actually quite useful in differentiating between these, okay? So we have quite a few projects we're working on now, and hopefully they'll be out soon, but uh, uh, these are things that, you know, every day when we see patients with this, they're very difficult. Even the best cardiologists have trouble differentiating them, okay? So if you don't, obviously, of these four choices, it's clearly uh, ventricular tachycardia in this case, but in real life, it's not that easy, okay? So just want to make you aware of that. So again, the best choice here is ventricular tachycardia. Remember, a wide, regular, fast rhythm, okay? And one you certainly want to be aware of and be able to uh, localize or at least point out, okay? Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something.